Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India The next important thing is what kind of options or configurational features a designer would like to study. Because the user does not tell you all this. The user says I want an airship which does this. But based on your own knowledge and experience you decide should I use a diesel engine or a petrol engine. How will you choose this between diesel and petrol engine? How will you decide? Size of the engine, size and weight. Size of the engine, weight of the engine. So what I would do is I would say let us try to do the analysis for diesel engine first. Get the engine weight and hence the airship weight. Repeat for petrol engine. Okay. And here you might like to use some data from real life and then decide. But given a choice which engine will you use for an airship? Diesel or petrol? Why petrol? Lighter. Generally lighter, yes, generally lighter, generally lighter. But then diesel is cheaper, although it is artificial, it is cheaper. And it may, you might take an assessment that it will remain cheaper for the next few years because of the fact that it is used by farmers in the fields and the government will intentionally keep its price artificially low. So that is why many people who are rich may buy a diesel car, right? Because they say diesel is cheaper in the market. Diesel cars have their own issues. They have higher maintenance costs after a particular mileage or after a particular usage. They have generally more vibrations. They have problems in starting during cold weather. We know all this. But still you see in the market so many diesel cars. So that is why we said who knows? The user might tomorrow say, oh, I want to try a diesel engine. This will increase the reach of the airship. So, let us try both of them. Now, the engine can be either normally aspirated or supercharged. Can somebody explain to me the difference between these two? What is meant by a supercharged engine or a normally aspirated engine? So, a supercharged engine has a small turbine or some device or a pump which delivers compressed air to the intake. Why? Because it takes the energy from the exhaust yeah. and it actually pumps it. No, but what is the need to do all this? Why should you why should you send in compressed air to the engine as a, in the intake? No, no, it is not that. Basically what happens is if you have a normally aspirated engine, which means if you have a normal engine which is having an intake to the ambient air, with the altitude increase, the density of the air coming in will reduce. With that, your performance will reduce. Okay? So, there is a, you know, there is a linear reduction, almost linear reduction in power available with altitude for a typical piston engine. And we were designing the airship for high altitude operations. Keep that in the mind. We are looking at lower Himalayas. So we were concerned that if we use a conventional engine, the power requirement at 12,000 feet may make the engine very large because it will be highly inefficient. So does it make sense to use a supercharged engine which is costlier, which is slightly heavier, but it has got a constant pressure power output with altitude up to some altitude? Or should we go for a simple, lighter, cheaper, normally aspirated engine? So we wanted to give that option. Propeller type, it could be ducted or unducted. So what is meant by a ducted propeller? There is a nacelle or a duct around the, why do we do that? Why will the performance increase by putting a duct? Not flow separation, basically what will happen is, 
that uh, <coughs> if you if you look at a conventional propeller or a conventional propeller for an engine unducted if you use a unducted propeller the efficiency is lower because there is spillage across the beyond the diameter but if you contain it the efficiency improves plus understand one more thing this is an airship which is going to operate with passengers and most likely we are looking at non rigid airship most likely the propeller will be mounted or the engine will be mounted on the on the gondola so there will be people walking past it and from passenger safety point of view if it is ducted it is safer because when a propeller moves at high rpm it becomes almost invisible and therefore there is a real life situation possible in which people will you know probably walk in the propeller or you know get hurt it has happened so many times so from ground ground based operational safety it will be safer to duct the propeller not only does it increase the efficiency it also makes it safer to operate but it increases the cost and the weight so you must take a call so when we make small remotely controlled airships we never duct the propeller because the weight problems are far more than the benefits and there we say be careful propeller is rotating don't go near so with that warning sometimes what we do we make a small cage around the propeller just in the front in the back connect them and you know it is visible but that's also very tough because if there is any vibration or uh, disturbance this cage can hit the propeller okay so there will be weight penalty anyway and the improvement in the thrust may not be that substantial for a very small propeller but for a large propeller then might be so we said let us have a feature okay then balloon type separate or integral what is meant by a separate balloon and a integral balloon so let me show you a figure of the two types and then you will uh, probably appreciate this is a very small thing actually it's not something very great but it can make uh, a difference in some cases so this is an airship envelope and in this envelope i'll show you the single balloon eh? in this airship envelope i make a small cut here and then i put another small bag inside and here i put this double sided fan which can either expel air or which can suck air okay this is called as a separate balloon because it's a small envelope inside the big envelope so this is the separate balloon the other option i can have for the same requirement is there is this thing and i have only a hemispherical only a hemispherical bag which is attached so this is called as a integral balloon what is the main main repercussion of choosing integral or separate let's say which one will you choose will you make a separate balloon or an integral balloon balloon for a passenger carrying large airship what will you choose he will choose separate balloon okay what is your logic the attachment of a separate balloon is very easy you can actually make it separately push it through this small hole stick it to a very small area seal it and put this double sided fan okay if that is the case then why people go for integral 
and are there any benefits of integral compared to separate? Less? Less fabric required. required. So this is lighter and this is simpler. Okay. Now you might say fabric, but in a large airship, if the balloon is 35 percent, you can see in one case you will have a sphere of that much volume, on the other case you will have a hemisphere of that much volume roughly. So it will be really norm normally it will be half the surface area. And suppose half surface area of a balloon is not a small number, okay. Just assume you can do this simple calculation. Take an airship of 8000 meter cube envelope volume and tell me on model page for the same GSM of 200 grams per square meter, what is the difference in the weight of an integral versus a separate balloon? It will be half, but half will it be 2 kgs or 20 kgs? So the material is 200 grams per square meter and the airship envelope is 8000 meter cube and the inflation fraction is 35 percent. Okay. So I just make a note here 35 percent inflation or it will be I will be equal to 65. So actually I is equal to six, uh, 65 percent or 0 0.65. V envelope is 8000 meter cube and uh, the you know GSM is 200 grams per meter square. This is the weight of the balloon fabric. So for these three things work out the difference in the weight of the integral and separate balloon. Okay. The next thing that we wanted to study, yes. Do we consider how the dynamics change uh, when the balloon, you know when air is pushed inside the balloon or, is it, or when it is pushed out of it, do we consider how the dynamics change? Dynamics actually will not change too much because if you have volume available in the spherical or hemispherical balloon, the same pump is sucking and throwing air. So it won't change too much. That is fine, but if you have a separate balloon and you have a big sphere inside and it uh, occupies a considerable volume, right? Like in this case, it, consider, it uh, comprises of about 35 percent of the entire, uh, entire volume. In that case, don't you think when you uh, pump out all the air, the dynamics of the entire airship will change. When you pump out all the air from a spherical balloon or a uh, hemispherical balloon, the only difference will be that this is heavier than that. The empty weight will be more. What is the other difference you see in dynamics? I am saying in terms of uh, new moments that will be introduced because your balances will, will be different, right? Because the because all the air from the balloon is out and in both cases they all the air will be out yeah but the concentration of mass is different right because in in case of the integral balloon the mass was uh, widely distributed but it's not the case in uh, in the case of this no 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 that's not true even in the case of a separate balloon the mass of air sucked in will again go into a spherical fashion at almost the same location so, will there be too much difference because once inflated, okay, you are right in a way that in one case it will be spread to a larger area and lesser height, in the other it will be a smaller, uh, smaller dia, I mean smaller width and larger height. Yes, so that can affect also, that can also affect, it can also affect, it can create uh, some difference, okay. But right now we are not considering that, we are considering only and only the effect of weight, okay. Then thrust vectoring. Thrust vectoring is uh, something that helps in the performance of the uh, airship. You know that it can uh, take off easily if there is thrust vectoring and uh, you do not, uh, I mean thrust vectoring will support in uh, vertical takeoff. But then it is going to create weight and complexity. Similarly, transmission system, uh, fin, cross and plus already we have seen. Transmission system, this was just a small point that how do you transmit the 
thrust vectoring mechanism onto the gondola. So we just just wanted to put one factor there as either a simple system or a complex system. Okay. Inputs for the code. I call it a code because ultimately we made it into a uh, into a Fortran program, and uh, we also have a spreadsheet. I think. So the first input will be the envelope volume or payload, depending on whether you are using it in the analysis mode or in the design mode. Then the range, then the maximum sustainable cruise speed to get you the maximum thrust required and hence uh, engine sizing. And then operating altitudes, maximum for pressure altitude, minimum and cruise for the balloonist sizing. And then uh, whether you are operating in ISA or other than ISA conditions and what is the length to diameter ratio and the number of fins, basically 4. Then the other inputs were type of the engine, already we have discussed it, type of the propeller, type of the balloon. There was one more issue, when you estimate the weight of the fin, you can assume the fins to be either inflatable or solid or rigid. In the case of airships, we normally see uh, fins which are inflatable normally. The reason for that is very simple that uh, the size of a fin is going to be quite large in a big airship and you can use the volume available inside the fins to put LTA gas to get more. But you will be surprised that most airship manufacturers actually fill the tail, uh, tail fins with air not with LTA gas because the fins tend to fly off then separately if you put uh, LTA gas. And secondly, it is a very clever way of controlling the center of gravity in case the CG has to be moved slightly behind, by putting air in the uh, fins, you increase the weight behind. Okay. So, there are two ways, now in, in the calculation here we have assumed it to be basically a built up structure, like a small wing. So, there were two approaches, one was we say okay, it weighs so much per square foot or per square meter and we simply use it, this is called the area density method or we said let us look at the textbook given by Raymer which discusses formulae for vertical tail and horizontal tail of small aircraft which are similar for an airship using that formulae. I think we abandoned Raymer's formulae eventually and we use the area density method. Then the TVC, thrust vectoring system and the transmission system. Okay. Then constants. So, I will just quickly go through the list, I have already mentioned the parameters, the helium purity level, we took 95 percent as the uh, rock bottom, below this we want the gas to be purified. Uh, air volume balloon at max altitude for control and trim was 2 percent, this is based on a study of, I will show you that detail. So, this is the balloon required, balloon volume required for trim, over pressure was considered to be 500 Newton per meter square. And we went for a simple hemispherical balloon because we were concerned about the weight. We assume that 5 percent power will be consumed by accessories and uh, the gondola will be made up of a simple standard composite fuselage type structure without pressurization. So, we got this number for the typical value of weight per volume of a gondola and uh, empennage area density weight of the empennage per square meter. Okay. So, with this we can get some, now anyway we are running out of time. So, at this point we will stop today's discussion.